Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's Kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing Kingdom Realities. Is it possible to touch the heart of the Creator and see His power move on your behalf? In How to Move the Hand of God, Apostle Michael Orokpo unveils the secrets to divine intervention. Learn the power of faith-filled prayer that reaches heaven and shakes the earth. Discover how humility, obedience, and worship can unlock miraculous answers. Step into a life where God's hand moves in response to your trust and devotion teaching you how to invite God's mighty hand into every area of your life. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise, we give you glory. What an honor and opportunity it is, Father, to come into fellowship and intimacy with you. This morning we have come with faith and reverence to encounter and to receive from your everlasting fountains. Precious Lord, we ask that you graciously reveal yourself to us Open up your dimensions, Abba Father, and cause everyone to have a definite encounter. And as we step out of this place, let that encounter translate to forces of the Spirit that invigorates and empowers, giving us the capacity to conquer our world for you. And your name alone is glorified. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand. And take your seat. Thank you so much, choir. Can we celebrate the choir? Glory to God. Praise God. This morning, as I was preparing to come for this service, the Lord put a word in my spirit. And I believe, like Daddy said, it's time for someone to really go higher. Because the Lord asked me to share with you on the secrets for provoking the hand of God. Hallelujah. And as I share with us this morning, you will see that the hand of God is not a reality that comes on the scene just casually. And so when God is set to stretch forth his hand over his people, then it's time for something remarkable to happen with, in, and through them. And so I am persuaded that somebody from this service, whether on ground or online, will step into a new dimension of operations. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. In order for us to appreciate why God does the things he does, especially in the light of stretching forth his hand, I just want to read a scripture. Psalm 34, verse 19. Let's begin our journey from there. And we trust God to open us up to deeper dimensions of his oracles. The Bible said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it's not a surprise when we go through trials. It's not a surprise when there are situations in our lives that attempt to defile our faith. It's not a surprise when we encounter numerous challenges in life. In fact, the presence of challenges, amongst other things, is a sign that you are making impact. If you are not making impact, I can assure you, the enemy will not waste his resources on you. The devil is not omnipotent. The devil is not omniscient. The devil is not omnipresent. So he manages his resources carefully. 
God is the only one who can lavish what he has abundantly because he is creator. If he finishes, he can create again. Not the devil. The devil is limited in resources. And so when you find the devil beginning to bombard somebody, know that they have seen something. This is why at the age of eight days, all hair broke loose concerning the life of Jesus. Because they projected and saw that this is a king eternal. And so you wonder how consequential is the life of an eight day old boy. They've seen a great destiny. Imagine how far the devil was willing to go. Every child below the age of two. We know this child is eight days old, but let's create a buffer. We will stretch very wide to make sure he falls into the spectrum. Any child below the age of two, kill them. Don't, don't do a DNA test. That's a waste of time. Slaughter all of them. We want to make sure that this one does not survive. See, when the devil tries to bombard you, give thanks. It's a sign that you are making a mark that is shaking and terrorizing the world of darkness. It's a sign that you are beginning to move in a direction that the devil is so threatened and he wants to shut you down by all means. He said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you see, that scripture did not leave us without a witness. So no matter how numerous your challenges are, even before you start, there is a guarantee. He said the Lord delivers him from them all. So there's nothing we are going through that we will not come out of. It's just a matter of time and the deployment of secrets. And this is why this morning God has come to show us some of the secrets of the kingdom that provokes emancipation. Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. What a modus operandi. If I can't kill you, I will destroy you. If I can't destroy you, I will steal from you that although you are in existence, but you are useless. This is how wicked the devil is. And these are his thought towards the children of God. But the same scripture left us with a witness. He said he's not the only one who came. Although he came first, that you came first is not a proof that you will win. He said, but I am come. That you might have life and life to the full. So this time you will not just live. He wants to make you, he wants to make you become bankrupt. But I have come to usher you into the realm of abundance. You will have so much that you will lend to many nations, and you will not borrow, and you will not run out of supply. I have come that you might have life and life to the full. So everything Satan does, God counters. And when God counters, he doesn't counter in equal proportion. He goes far beyond everything the devil tried. This is why no matter what happens to you as a Christian, it is not over. The Bible said there is hope for a tree that is cut off. It said at the scent of water, it will not just be revived, it will produce much more than it ever, it ever did. Because interventions bring you into divine dimensions. When God intervenes, he moves you from your humanity to his divinity. So every time the devil comes your path, it's a great mistake. Because he's inviting you into a realm that you would never have attained with your own natural ability. But you see, accessing those dimensions is something that we must be meticulous about in studying and understanding. In Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible said the secret things belong to God. He said, the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. When you see the scriptures we've quoted already, you will know that no Christian should be defeated. No Christian should live a defeated life. In fact, the heritage of a believer is to move from glory to glory. Proverbs 4, 18 said, the path of the just man is as a shiny light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So a Christian cannot remain down. A Christian cannot remain defeated. It is your heritage to bounce back. He said, although a righteous man falls seven times, he said seven times he will rise again. And so it is not in our DNA to be defeated. 
But you see, for you to walk in the glorious liberty that you have in God, there are secrets you must access. That's why he said the secret things belongs to God. He said, but the things that are revealed, they belong to us and to our children forever. So the outcome of your life is at the mercy of your revelation. If you don't know what is available to you and for you, and if you don't know how to deploy it, you will become offended even at God because you'll be wondering, the beautiful scriptures I read, are they just here to psych me up or are these things real? The truth is that they are real, but there is a way to access divine things. And the Bible told us why. It said God commits his blessings to us in a mystery. And the reason he does that is to preserve it for us so that they are not compromised. So the reason God places your blessings in mysteries and secrets is so that the princes of this world can't understand it. This is why all things will work together for good for you. Because when you are doing something and they try to preempt you, every step they take to stop you becomes a miscalculation. But you who is the child of God, you must know how to access what God has made available. And this is not supposed to be a mystery for you. He said to them that are without is a mystery. But to you, it is given to understand the secrets of the kingdom. Christians go through things and sometimes it appears as though what the Bible says concerning them is not true because they've not deployed themselves to learning the ways of the spirit. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible said, According as his divine power, he has given unto you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So he has given you everything you need for life and godliness. And it's not according to your power. It's according to his ability. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. He said, but that thing is true. Accessing it is through the knowledge of him that called you to glory and to virtue. This morning, the Lord has placed in my heart to show you how to move the hand of God because we need it. And I tell you why the hand of God is important. Aside the fact that there are many things the devil has put in place to destroy you, which of course will become the platform for your manifestation. Because what we call testimonies are actually hurdles that we cross. If there are no challenges, there will be no testimonies. So every setup of the devil is actually our platform for manifestation. You know, I tell most, of the, I, most Christians that I come across that our platforms are not pulpits. Our platforms are the challenges we encounter and overcome by demonstrating the excellency of God's power. That's where you shine. You shine in darkness. He said, the light shineth in the darkness. The darkness. So you, you shouldn't be afraid of challenges. Whatever the devil throws at you, you will always overcome. And it will become another advantage. A beaming light out of your spirit. But there are things you must know. There are dimensions you must handle. And there are many things God has put in place for our advantage. And I said the hand of God is very important. Not just because of what Satan is doing that you will win. But because... It is the zenith of the manifestation of God's power in the life of a man. See, there are many things God has put in place for your victory. Your faith is one of it. Do you know that the faith you have is not yours? It's the faith of Jesus that was credited to your spirit. In Romans chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible said to everyone that believes, it said God dealt the measure of faith. So as you believe, faith was put in your spirit. And Paul was speaking in Galatians 2.20. He said, it's the faith of the Son of God. He said, the life I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So he said, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word of God, faith is transferred into your spirit. So the faith you use for a victorious life was put in you. So what you need now, like Jesus was teaching, is not faith, it's understanding. That's why I say, even if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain to be removed. Every one of us seated here, you have enough faith to overcome the world. Because you are born of God, the faith of God has been put in your spirit. The faith you have now is the faith of the Son of God. And it doesn't stop there. The righteousness you have now is the righteousness of God. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5.21, 
he made him that was seen was without sin to become sin that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in Romans 5 17 the Bible said that God gave us abundant grace and the gift of righteousness so he put righteousness in your spirit the reason you are able to live right is because the nature of righteousness has been put in you if that nature was not there you would have struggled all your life and this is why you shouldn't live wrong because you are now righteous I'm talking to you because I'm a man the nature of a man is in me so it gives me the capacity to speak if I'm not speaking it means I'm sick so when you find a believer who lives under the yoke of sin that is a sick believer because if he's truly righteous he has the nature of God to live above sin glory to God but the point I'm making is that even the righteousness you have was given to you and that righteousness the Bible said he makes you to reign in life so you don't just reign over sin you reign everywhere you find yourself because righteousness is a power a power that brings you into accuracy and precision as far as life is concerned it's an ability of the spirit the reason some of you want to get into business you say something told you not to and that business crash that something is the force of righteousness working in you that business is bound to be to fail and because there is a spirit of righteousness in you that occasions precision you couldn't go into that error that's what drew you back and because you have that advantage where people fail you don't fail you don't just know why you make the right decisions whether it's a business decision or a career decision or a family decision beyond what you read and beyond your experience that's the spirit of righteousness at work but that capacity was also credited in you the spirit of righteousness the anointing we have today is the anointing of Jesus Acts chapter 10 verse 38 he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what power Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he say you and I will be anointed with what with the Holy Ghost and with power so the same anointing that was on Jesus is the anointing that was put on you the life you have today is not yours is the life of Jesus the Bible said John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life and you say where did the life come from first John 5 11 to 13 he said this is the record he said God has given us eternal life and he said that life is in his son he said whoever has the son has life he said these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life so even the life you have is the life of the son of God this is why anything that could not defeat Jesus can defeat you if you know that life comes to work because these things function by consciousness and revelation I know that the life that Christ had that made him overcome the grave it's already on my inside so as for people like us we know that nothing can destroy us you know people look at you and they are telling you ah, it's well the things happening now people are just dying people are failing not me I operate by a different system because when we speak about life it's not just what puts oxygen on your nostrils when we speak about life we are talking about a dimension that exists in God that makes everything that flows from God to find expression so because that has connected to me I am connected to the divine class and so things can happen to men not me that's why Paul calls us new creation because it would have been difficult to truly describe who we are because we look like men but we are not men I'm telling you know when they see us they think because we have two eyes one nose two ears we are all the same we are not the same we are not the same they have life in their blood they have life in their soul but they don't have life in their spirit because every man like I told them yesterday has three order of life there is the life of the blood Leviticus 17 11 is called bios every animal has that life then there is the life of the soul Genesis 2 7 God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul that's why all of us think all of us can do physics all of us can do chemistry all of us can do sociology without Jesus is the life of the soul but there is a realm that you can't enter until you have Zoe because there's a difference between bios, soke, and zoe. What we have is zoe. We don't just have bios. So we go to the market with men. We go to the university with men. We do business with men. But when the principles of economics fail, you step back. I have another order of life. 
when the when the business fails you have done everything you know to do then you step back this time it's no longer time to apply the principles of economics it's time to apply the principles of heaven because you need to superimpose the divine side into the human side that's when you start speaking the language that even your mind can't understand paul said when i speak in an unknown tongue he said my spirit prayed but my understanding is unfruitful that means there are activities that i can engage in that my mind can't participate in only my spirit can go there so when you step into your closet kakita rakatoa ziza vira karos tefera paragadida satak pantakiro shatadari stavira varaka paroatate ento si see you move move when you catch something you now bring it into your soul and then you prophesy it that's where your mind will now participate oh see there are many activities we we do that our soul can participate in elizabeth said my soul doth magnify the lord because my spirit hath rejoiced in the god of my salvation that means my spirit did something long ago my soul has now been brought into participation the business was failing nothing in my soul could solve it i entered my spirit i downloaded something from the god realm and brought it into my soul and solved the problem advantages that we have the anointing righteousness faith several advantages even the name of jesus is an edge the bible said the name of the lord is a strong tower he said the righteous runneth into it they are saved and jesus said go out in my name cast out devils he has given us a weapon he said when you step out if men are fighting you that's not the issue he said evil spirits will come he said but even when spirits come don't be intimidated he said in my name cast out devils so you there's nothing that can stop you all of these advantages but there is something called the hand of god i'm trying to tell you why many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them from them all if you connect to the frequency of eternal life you will dominate your world if you connect to the frequency of righteousness you will dominate your world if you take the name of jesus in faith you will dominate your world if you use the weapon of faith he say above all taking the shield of faith you will dominate your world so we have too much in our quiver but tonight i'm not talking about righteousness i'm not talking about the name of god i'm not talking about eternal life i want to talk to you about the hand of god what is the hand of god the hand of god is the sovereign authority of god it is beyond the realm of the believer's authority it is god's sovereign authority that he puts on a man part time so there are times when you are going through crisis you discover that your faith did not just come alive there are times that you go through certain crises even when you shout the name of jesus you shout in fear there are times when you are going through crisis you even forget that you have eternal life because we are humans it's not all the times that we are charged up you know the bible says, building up yourself upon your most holy faith so you can have faith as tall as this microphone but you may operate it faith comes by the word but prayer builds you up this is why some days you step out somebody is deaf you say open somebody's ear is deaf open another day you step out they say somebody is deaf you run away you are one you are faith you don't operate at the zenith of your faith all the time because things bombard you so there are situations where maybe your revelation won't work there are situations where maybe you couldn't rise up in faith there are situations where sometimes you can't even deploy the energy of god in your spirit from the the vote of eternal life it looks as if you are helpless it's in those situations that you need something beyond you and those are the times when god steps into the equation so when we talk about the hand of god we are talking about circumstances and situations where god show up to fight the battle himself and there are many battles of your life that you will need god to show up for you i'm telling you even the greatest faith giants there were times when they came to god and said lord if you don't intervene we'll be in trouble and i will show you from scriptures you know the apostles were flogged and beaten 
and they discovered that their faith diffused. When the Sanhedrin gathered and they saw the elders warn them, they had to go back to God and say, please stretch forth your hand. What is happening here, our revelations can't suffice. We discover that we are afraid even though we are people of faith. We discover that we want to use your name but we are weak. Stretch your hand. So there are situations of your life where God needs to step in. The gang up may be so much that you can't rise up in faith. That's what we call the hand of God. And every time the hand of God shows up, he does valiantly. And I tell you, there are many levels in your rising that God needs to show up for you to rise. Because like David said, you will, you will see that many a day that rise up against you for no just cause. In that situation, the only thing you can say is, Thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. I'm telling you, everybody you see making impact on earth, there are gaps that they can't explain. Only God came to fill it up. And if you will succeed consciously and deliberately, you must know what to do to provoke the appearing of God. This is what makes certain men succeed in every season. When all they have failed them, they know what to do for God to show up. You know, Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, he says, Satan desires to have you, to sift you as wheat. He said, but be of good cheer. I've prayed for you. I've prayed so that your faith will not fail. That means a man's faith can fail him. But when your faith fail you, God has to show up. He said, I have prayed for you. I came into the equation. So the reason we, are, we have guarantee beyond what God gave us is that God himself shows up when, when he sees that we fail. When he sees that we are weak. But there is a structure you must put in place to ensure that the hand of God is on your life. Now, before I show you how to provoke the hand of God, let me show you a few things that the hand of God does. So that you will see how the hand of God gives you an advantage and you will become conscious and deliberate about provoking it. Number one, the hand of God provokes supernatural speed. Second Kings 18 verse 45 to 46. Elijah showed up and told the king, he said, go, prepare yourself, hurry, otherwise the rain will stop you. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And he went to the place of prayer. And as he was there praying, he told Elijah, check, 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 check. After seven times, Elijah saw something that looked like a man's fist. And he said, go, it is done. The rain is coming. And after that happened, we now saw a phrase in that scripture. When he finished that prayer, himself was supposed to look for a way to go. Because the rain was coming and the rain has no regard for anybody. So even him was about to be beaten with rain. And he didn't have a chariot. The king had the advantage of a chariot and had gone ahead. But the Bible said, and the hand of God was upon Elijah. When the hand of God came upon him, all his deficiencies were no longer a factor. And something happened. He said, Elijah outran the chariot of the king. You know, if you don't understand how those errors work, you won't know what they are talking about. Because the king has the best war horses. Because the safety of the king is, is prime. Every soldier can die, but the king remains alive. The day the king dies, the war is over. Everybody goes into captivity. So they make sure the king has the best advantage. But when the hand of God came, even the advantage of the king became useless. The Bible said he outran the chariot of Ahab to the gates of Jezreel. It's like the way these footballers in Manchester, you see them with the Ferraris. You see them with power. When they move your car, it looks like you are trekking. That, that's the difference between the king and the ordinary man. But when the hand of God came upon the Elijah, even the king was like a toddler. He outran him. There is a dimension of speed that God puts on a man's life. Don't you know that? See, have you not seen certain people doing business and then they come to a point and they are stagnated? They do everything they know. Five years, they don't move any spot. It's not like they are doing anything wrong, but hair has broken loose. They will not go beyond this level. 
10 years they are there a point comes they even give up they think this thing won't work anymore and then suddenly the hand of God shows up and then what God will do in one day will be superior to what he, he should have done in 10 years this is what we are talking about here that your, your stagnation no longer matter your many failures no longer matter the delay no longer matter because when this force comes upon you it will cover up for all that you have achieved if you were moving at a stable pace I speak over someone this morning the speed that the hand of God provokes it rests upon you now there are systems in this kingdom I know your friends got married six years ago I know they have two children now it doesn't mean your life is a failure it doesn't mean your story has ended I know you left the university with your colleagues they've built their houses they have investments in different nations it doesn't mean you have failed when God shows up he can connect you to one man and in one week you can have investments in more nations than they ever dreamt of you can buy 10 houses why somebody has used seven years to build two you can buy 10 in one day you can get married and in one year you have triplets let me tell you something there is a system of restoration in this kingdom and nothing provokes it more than the hand of God when he comes he makes your delay looks like a strategy when he comes he makes makes your delay looks like a structure that he put in place to preserve you I prophesy over someone as you walk out of this service the hand of God will come upon you see there's an intelligence in this kingdom the Bible said if the princes of this world had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory see there were there are things some of us prayed for and the devil fought us from having it and it looked like God kept quiet we exercise faith. We call the name of Jesus. And God kept quiet. You know why? It's not because the devil was powerful. If God gave us those things when we prayed for, we wouldn't have had enough wisdom to manage it. So the devil thought he was winning and held us there for five years. After five years, when we built wisdom, God showed up. And when God moved us, he moved us 20 years ahead of our generation. And people look at you. Those who thought they were ahead of you, they now discover you are far ahead of them. And then you are wondering what happened. The devil will be shocked. Because what he called a delay, God turned it to a strategy. It's a technology in the spirit. The hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab unto Jezreel. It's a system. The laws of nature bend. This guy is not supposed to move this fast. The sovereign one has come. He lives above the realm. You must know how to provoke it. A lot in your life depends on it. I'm telling you. See, there are many battles you are not aware of. The ones you are binding are the ones you know. The Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. He said, 10,000 by your right hand. They shall not come near you. That means there are 11,000 enemies that you don't know. You are fighting two uh, challenges. You say, I do. if you know the real battle, you will know what is for you is greater than what is against you. 11,000 was not permitted to come close to you. The hand of God. Number two. The hand of God is a system that works wonders. When the hand of God is on the scene, wonders become natural. Acts 4, 29 to 30. When they prayed and the hand of God came upon them, the Bible said, and with great power, God gave witness to the apostles of the resurrection of Jesus. And he said, great grace was upon them. And you go further, I say, and many wonders were done by the apostles. Acts 5 from verse 12. So great grace came upon them and many wonders were done. See, God does not just give you speed for you to recover. Now that you have recovered, that becomes your natural state. And people are look, looking at you. What kind of capacity is this? This is not normal. They go and check your CV. What is happening with you is beyond CV. Now, supernatural has been superimposed into the natural. They see you, they say, come on, man. You are, you, you are operating like you are a world consultant. People who have experience of 40 years. 
that's 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 where you are operating. How long have you been in this business? You say, well, I'm just two years here. So how, how, how are you able to to control what you are control? When I whisper, angels trumpet. It's called the supernatural. And these are things God does. Didn't you read about the four lepers? A whole nation was besieged. The whole army incapacitated. The king incapacitated. Women were eating their children. That's the highest level of hopelessness. And four lepers said, why sit we here until we die? And lepers were walking. And the enemy was hearing sound of chariots. Well, these guys, their toes are eating up. What is provoked producing that sound? See, when the supernatural comes upon you, anything you do is amplified. So you crack a joke, 10 million people are laughing. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.